Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Brian McGonigal. I am the manager of alumni and community engagement for the School of Environmental and Biological Sciences and the New Jersey Agricultural Experiment Station. I'd like to welcome you to the Food Science Department of Food Science 75th anniversary virtual celebration. Uh, before we get started, uh, just a few ground rules I want to go over. This event is being recorded and it will be posted online and shared in the follow-up email uh, to all attendees and registrants. Feel free to leave your cameras on, but I would ask that you uh, remain muted through the duration of the event as it might cause some disturbance in the presentations. There may be some opportunities uh, to speak uh, throughout the course of the event at appropriate times. If you have any questions throughout the event for any of our speakers, uh, please add those in the chat box. Uh, you'll find them at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Uh, at the end of the event, we're going to have a, a presentation on the Food Science Community Cookbook. So uh, be sure to stick around for that. Um, very interesting uh, presentation by one of our alumni, and uh, it should be a pretty fun project. So stick around for that. Right now, I would like to uh, introduce the chair of the Food Science Alumni Committee, uh, Joe Panarisi. He's an alum, of course, and uh, he's here to... Uh, kick it off. So Joe, uh, take it away. Thanks, Brian. And uh, again, thank you for uh, all of your hard work for uh, setting this up. Um, I know it's been a learning process uh, across uh, many of the Zoom uh, presentations we've had up till now, but uh, hopefully this will be a great outcome. And uh, welcome everyone. I see a lot of familiar faces. I see people that I, I don't know, but uh, I'm Joe Panarisi. I'm a Rutgers uh, food science graduate, uh, undergrad 89, uh, graduate school. I have a master's in 91. Uh, my uh, advisor was Dr. T.C. Lee, and I was a teaching assistant for uh, Dr. Klein and for Dr. Lachance. So, you know, two great, great, great professors, and I've learned a lot from them. Um, I really, uh, you know, really looking forward to this event. It's unfortunate that we can't do this in person, but we certainly wanted to acknowledge the 75th anniversary, uh, close to the anniversary date. And uh, this was one way we thought about doing it. So hopefully everybody will uh, enjoy this uh, presentation. Um, the Food Science Graduate Alumni Committee is a blend of faculty, alumni, and students. So we have uh, a broad range of uh, partic participants. And uh, to be honest with you, if anyone else would would like to uh, participate in the group, we certainly would welcome that. But uh, we look we look at the opportunities to connect the alumni to the students and provide some meaningful uh, advice and content uh, for the students as far as uh, you know whether they, whether it's their career aspirations or just things in general. We've had uh, of some uh, meetings where we've actually uh, helped the students connect with people in industry. Uh, we've had some where we've actually provided tools for interviewing and things like that. So the committee is actually very proactive in, uh, and, and engaged in this process. So again, I really would like to uh, uh, reach out to uh, you, know, you as an alumni, and hopefully uh, if you'd like to uh, participate and contact myself or anyone else on the committee actually, and, uh, or, or Brian. Um, that said, I want everyone to have a great experience. And uh, I'd like to turn it over to our next speaker, and that is uh, Dean Lawson. Well, thank you, Joe. Uh, thank you for the welcome. And um, I'm really pleased uh, to have this opportunity to bring greetings on the 75th anniversary of the Department of Food Science and to congratulate a generation of faculty, staff, and students who have proudly served the department and the university. Um, what, I, what I love about these opportunities is a chance to look at department's histories. And when I was looking at the food science history, it was, I was really struck at how um, it really started from humble beginnings in 1946, um, when it opened with one professor, one room, and, and two support staff, um, and really ushered a proud history of bringing food-related science, education, and research to Rutgers and the, and the state. Um, over the time, the department's focus has evolved, as it should, um, from food processing and canning in the late 40s and 50s 
um, to natural products and, nat and natural functionality of foods in the 1990s and the 2000s. And of course, today with expanded um, work in food safety, food microbiology and nutrition. This, ri this rich history of groundbreaking research in food biology, food chemistry and food engineering would not have been possible without the painstaking work of generations of graduate and undergraduate students like, like Joe, um, like, like many of you, um, who have worked alongside our dedicated faculty in labs and classrooms. Together, it's the faculty and students who have pro produced the kinds of results whose value is hard to miss in our world. And um, just thinking about all the different nutritional aspects of food and food science, um, I'm reminded of um, in 1992 when there was um, findings that said green tea boasts um, had antioxidant benefits. And if, if I go to the grocery store today and um, I look on the shelves, I can see everything from green ice cream um, to green tea powders for proof that this research had an invaluable um, impact on today's food industry. I also want to point out that the department's work in food science expands beyond research and into technical assistance and innovation with significant economic and daily lived experience impacts. Our outreach includes working with food entrepreneurs at the Rutgers Food Innovation Center. It's our business incubator um, and economic development accelerator program where clients work with experts on a range of issues from finer aspects of microbiology to risk assessment and safety. The department also serves as a technical resource for our Department of Family and Community Health Science, which is part of our Rutgers Cooperative Extension and the Experiment Station, and provides answers to, to common questions asked um, on a regular basis. You know, whether food is safe when it's left on a counter, um, how um, safe is canned food, and how to use frozen food when electricity goes out. And where would we have been um, without this kind of practical application of risks posed with microorganisms? It all happens right here in the Department of Food Science. It was no accident that Professor Don Schaffner became the invaluable resource um, during COVID-19 um, when he was called upon to weigh in on conventional wisdom related to the risk of everyday life during the pandemic. And through Professor Schaffner's expertise and his ability to communicate, um, Rutgers was at the forefront of providing science-based facts during a very turbulent time. And I gotta say, even my mom out in California was calling me about this Dr. Schaffner guy. And if I knew him, he was like a rock star um, in uh, the world as people were watching um, about how to, how to address COVID. So thank you, Don. Um, such widespread outreach and service elevated records in the eyes of the world, and in doing so elevated um, added value to the food science degrees that you all work so hard to earn. I applaud the work of the Food Science Alumni Committee and thank you all for all that you're doing in your careers in the food industry. Thank you for your care and engagement with your alma mater. It means a lot. Um, to uh, Department Chair Carl Matthews and the collective faculty, staff, students, and alumni, I want to congratulate you on the 75th anniversary of the Department of Food Science. Um, and I really look forward to today's tonight's talks and discussion. So thank you for that. And I will turn this back to you, Joe. Thank you, Dean Lawson. Those were very uh, kind and heartfelt words that you spoke about the department. And uh, I feel the same. And before I turn it over to the next speaker, I just wanna briefly, we're gonna see some videos at the end of the uh, meeting uh, from some of the alumni about their experience with the food science department. But I just want to just touch briefly on my experience. You know, I, I felt that my education in food science there opened up a lot of doors for me. You know, the, the networking, my first job was actually Dr. Ho connect, connected me with someone at IFF. And I went to IFF. And then from there, I worked for a number of iconic companies like Unilever, Best Foods, Johnson & Johnson. So, uh, and worked for a lot of iconic brands and learned a lot of different things across all different technologies. And my favorite part was actually getting into the uh, uh, managerial part of the, the career ladder uh, and managing people. And uh, it was just, it was a great experience, but uh, Rutgers Food Science, again, I wanna thank the department and all the professors that, that helped me and, and gave me really good advice as far as, uh, you know, career advice. And I've, over the years, I've actually tapped into some. I've even actually, I actually had Dr. Lachance come and give a presentation at J&J &J when I was the head of R&D for their nutrition division. So again, thank you, Food Science. Congratulations on 75 years. 
And now I'd like to turn it over to the department chair, Dr. Carl Matthews. Thanks so much, Joe, greatly appreciate it. And thank you so much, Laura, too, for uh, um, you know, your kind words about our program uh, and its history and so forth and its role that it's had at SCBS and Rutgers uh, at large. Uh, let me go ahead and see if I can do some screen sharing here. Okay, hopefully everybody's got that up on their screens now. So, you know, again, I think it's fantastic that uh, everybody's able to join us this evening. Uh, we've just got a full spectrum of folks out here from our faculty, our students, um, the staff, and, and I think importantly, all of the alumni, all of you folks that have uh, joined us tonight uh, that make, you know, us a community. You know, Rutgers Food Science over the 75 years has continued the tradition of fostering exploration, innovation, and importantly, community as part of a translational program for healthy food. And if you look at this, you know, we, we were very devoted to um, serving New Jersey, but also beyond the borders of New Jersey. I, I've put some numbers up here as far as our faculty and undergraduate and grad students, but importantly, you know, we have a very robust undergraduate and graduate program that's comprised of both domestic and international students. And we also have a master's in business science program, uh, which is really robust and it, it's very well received by um, folks from across uh, the food industry. And so we're very pleased that we have uh, that particular program. I encourage all of you, if you haven't been onto our website recently, to please go visit our website. Uh, we have the newsletter on there. Uh, we have information concerning uh, what our alumni are up to. And if, and if any alumni out there want to share uh, some most recent uh, events that they're involved in, um, please uh, go ahead and do that. We'd greatly appreciate it. You know, importantly, you know, I've indicated that we were wanting to serve New Jersey, but indeed our alumni are serving the, the global community. And if you look at this, I, I truly believe that Rutgers Food Science has a global reach to it. We have our alumni all over the world, uh, Central America, South America, Southeast Asia, Asia, uh, Europe, uh, you name it, we have our alumni out there. And it's so important that we have that network of our alumni that come back and give to the department and, and that's through internship opportunities, employment opportunities, research opportunities um, in a global scale. So it's, it's just fantastic uh, that we, we, we have that available to us and it's because of all of you. You know, I put this up here and it kind of gives this timeline from 1946 to the present, 2021. And you know, during that period of time, the global population has increased greater than threefold. And I, and I think that, you know, our program, food science in general, the food scientists out there, each one of you are serving in the forefront of being able to provide food for all of those individuals. And this is gonna continue hopefully well into the future. I look at this and all of you are aware of that we've had really seismic shifts in consumer preferences. Um, from TV dinners that were served in, uh, you know, aluminum foil trays, um, Salisbury steak, I remember when I was a kid, <laughs> um, to personalized meals. Uh, you know, we, we've got specific ingredients now, uh, and these ingredients and in the foods um, have functional and uh, medicinal medical value to them. You know, and in order to ensure that the population can be fed for the next 75 years really requires a commitment to sustainability and embracing the circular food system. If you look at this, we have development of cell-based um, plant and insect proteins, um, specific packaging materials, antimicrobials for use in preservation and, and water processing. Uh, you know, Rutgers food scientists are serving as leaders in the field. And it's, it's, it's all of you that are out there that are these leaders that we have. 
And so I think, you know, that's just fantastic for our students now to be made aware of all of this, um, what uh, Rutgers Food Science and the alumni here have done. You know, we're involved in many areas and we've evolved over time. And I think we're very forward thinking with respect to, you know, where we wanna go and what we can do uh, with respect to uh, the field of food science. And as uh, Dean Lawson had indicated, you know, we've got folks that are working in the food microbiome, probiotics, food safety, and, and importantly, the human microbiome. As I've mentioned before, and Dean Lawson had indicated too, medical foods uh, that are addressing uh, various metabolic disorders, uh, for instance, cardiovascular disease. Uh, we're looking at natural product chemistry, uh, secondary metabolites, functional foods, going back to that green tea. And I think it's so interesting too, because I noticed that um, you can, everything's green tea. Uh, so again, this is, you know, uh, research that was conducted here at Rutgers University and, and actually by Dr. Ho. Um, so part of this, and as I said before, you know, we're a translational program. And at core of that is one, our curriculum, but being able to look at development, sensory, um, processing and packaging in order to um, provide uh, the various goods, what the consumer wants and, and what's uh, needed by the global uh, community. So I have to go ahead and, and talk a little bit about our students and just how they continue to amaze me. Uh, this particular slide here shows uh, Smushables yogurt. And so our student uh, product development team, they won first prize for this in the uh, IFT Smart Snacks for Kids product development competition. And I just think this is fantastic from the standpoint that one, it's a healthy snack, but two, you get to play with it before you eat it. And so you can burst those little fruit spheres and then you get to drink that down. Um, I would actually enjoy having that as well. So more recently, our students that are participating in our food product development course, which is our capstone course for the program, which is taught by Dr. Paul Takestow, they entered, um, broken into different groups within the course, and they entered a, um, a competition that was being held by the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. And this was the Food Recovery Cooking Challenge. And basically part of this is looking at really addressing this circular food system and utilizing food scraps such as peels and cores that would normally be thrown away. And so one of the teams in the course actually won first uh, place in this competition for chicken sink uh, dumplings. Uh, some of the other products that uh, they had come up with or meals were um, barbecued, uh, banana peeled quesadillas, meatballs with salad green pesto and spaghetti sauce. Um, all very inventive. And again, if you go to our website, there's the cookbook up there and there's actually YouTube videos of how to make all of this. Uh, so, you know, we, we can have all of this going on within our program. And importantly, I think the, the person that I really want to thank, uh, and unfortunately, he's not here tonight because he's teaching, is uh, Paul Takestow because it's his innovative ideas and thoughts and bringing together this capstone course where our students can assimilate the knowledge that they've gained in their hands-on activities in order to be able to compete in these types of events. Uh, so my hats off to Paul for all that he's done. So Carl, you got uh, pretty much ready to... Okay, I'll just two more slides, that's it. So I just okay. wanted to say is that we're going through, you know, the pandemic like everybody else is. We've had challenges here with both research and teaching, and we've continued to move things forward, not only in the research front, but also the teaching front. And so finally, I just wanted to mention is that recently, Rutgers was ranked number uh, 23 globally in the most recent uh, U.S. News and World Report of program rankings. And if you followed food science programs, you'll see that they've increased dramatically the number of them globally. And actually this ranking puts us in the top 10% of programs uh, globally. So it's, it's a really, really 
um, nice place to be in. A recent article by ROI New Jersey um, looked at um, these rankings and what they noted that for Rutgers New Brunswick, we were actually at um, the, the number one ranked program at Rutgers New Brunswick. So I'm kind of hurrying up a little bit here because Brian's getting us going. What I finally wanted to say is that we have put together a timeline of the department from 1946 to present. It's in five-year blocks. This will be available. I will provide a link to it on our website um, and that you can go there. And I request of you that if you have photos or information that we can fill in in those five-year blocks, I would greatly appreciate that. And finally, to wrap it up, I just want to Thank everybody here for the 75 years of success that have been made possible by the incredible Rutgers uh, food science community. Um, I really thank each of you for your support and be well. I now, I guess I, to keep everything on time, I'm gonna go ahead right into and introduce our, really our first speaker. Um, of the evening, and that's Dr. Tom Monk. So Tom was an undergraduate in our program, maybe some of you didn't realize that, from 1971 to 1975. And then he came back and he joined our program in 1984 to 2015. Uh, he received his PhD from some little school up in Massachusetts. Uh, what is it? MIT, that's right, I keep forgetting. And he received that in 1979. He has uh, served as both the director of our graduate program as well as chair of the department. Uh, Tom, as most of you know, is internationally recognized expert in food safety, has co-authored with his graduate students about 120 peer reviewed papers in, that have been cited more than 5,000 times. He actually co-authored with me and our colleague down at University of Delaware the widely adopted undergraduate textbook, Food Microbiology, an Introduction. Tom has provided more than a dozen scientific opinions for lawsuits involving natural claims and foodborne illness. He is a fellow of the American Academy of Microbiology and a fellow of the Institute of Food Technologies. Presently, he is a distinguished professor emeritus in food science at Rutgers University. And this, I think, is the interesting part, is that he has three children, five grandchildren, is, and is an enduring, uh, endurance athlete. Um, I'm thinking that probably relates back to the five grandchildren. So, Tom, I'm going to send it over to you. Okay, thank you, Carl. Um, I asked uh, Dr. Matthews to give me some leeway with the uh, charge for the talk because um, it's hard to say exactly what things uh, influenced my career as an academic um, because it's all interwoven throughout my personality. I came to Rutgers uh, in the spring of 1971. It hit me about 15 minutes ago that this was 50 years ago. Um, I would have made my talk a little differently if I had remembered it then, but you know, once you reach a certain age, you tend to forget things. Um, I'm going to talk about specific professors, and they will be ancient history to most of you, but the lessons they taught me have, have endured. Um, I, I've blacked out my, my student number because I still use it in a lot of my passwords, and you'll note that this was very avant-garde. Um, they, they used punch card technology on the um, on, on the IDs. If you don't know what a punch card is, uh, Google it. So um, you don't know what you don't know, and you've probably forgotten a lot of what you think you know. So I just like to say that a lot of the technical content we learn um, has been forgotten, but the principles and, and the ability to think critically I think in, endure with us. So the first thing that I remember that I forgot is the Bernoulli effect, the Bernoulli equation. Um, and in simple words, it means that as uh, velocity increases, pressure decreases. So if you're chopping around on a bicycle and a big truck 
um, goes by you, it sucks you in. Unless that's the Venturi principle. Um, I don't remember Dr. Dr. Parway, uh, but it, it doesn't matter. Um, now, um, who knows what this is? Um, just unmute yourself if you know and yell it out. I thought not. Um, Psychrometric chart? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you're, you got a good education. So it's a psychrometric <laughs> chart. Um, we spent a lot of time learning how to use it. What I remember is that um, hot air holds more water than cool air, which is why it doesn't get humid during the winter and why when we cool our cars, they lose moisture and we get a little puddle of water underneath. I've also forgotten a lot of my organic chemistry, except as a foundation for biochemistry, which I, I retain a lot of. So from organic chemistry, I remember the uh, double bonds are highly reactive and that alcohols are oxidized to aldehydes and to um, acids. Now, I have very few pictures of, um, of the faculty of my era because the JPEG hadn't been invented yet. But in um, Google search, I, I came up with Professor Roy Morse. Professor Morse taught the science of food. Uh, I'm sorry, that's what I taught. He taught man and his food, the politically incorrect course that I changed to the science of food. But this was um, the first course that I took in food science. The curriculum uh, for the College of Agriculture and Environmental Science at the time was food science, animal science, plant science, take two out of three. Uh, I wasn't very enamored with animals, so I took plant science and food science. And I don't remember any of the content that uh, Dr. Morris taught us, but I remember his contagious enthusiasm for food science. And that was something that he taught me that I tried to carry through in my teaching career. Um, I ran into a student at Colonial Park the other day and said, hey, Dr. Montville, I had your course. And I said, my, and what do you remember? And he said, uh, that there's science and food? That's it. Um, this is someone none of you know, and it's Dr. Richard Olnicki. He was my freshman advisor. I went in to see him when it was time to declare my major. I said, you know, Dr. Olnicki, I think food science is really great, but it just has a lot of chemistry and I'm not great at chemistry. Right? Sign me up for environmental science. And he said, no, do the thing you think is exciting. If you can't handle the chemistry later on, you can always change majors. So from this, I learned to, to listen and, and to hear what people were really trying to say. And if a student popped into my office and said, Dr. Montreal, will you sign this? back when we had paper things to sign. Um, ah, come in, what is it? Tell me about it. Um, and, and I think I influenced some students that way um, by remembering what Dr. Mickey taught me as a freshman advisor uh, to listen. Another key person in the history of the uh, department was uh, Dr. Libby Steer. Dr. Steer was a century scientist and she was both the graduate and undergraduate director at the same time. The biggest thing I remember, aside from her being the heart of the department, was that she said, we train dogs, but we educate people. So I always bristle a little when people say, well, you train people for jobs in the food industry. I say, no, no, we, we educate them. We educate them to think critically so that they can get good jobs and be an asset in any industry, whatever they know. And I know this is hard for students to hear. When I was a student, I just wanted a job that was better than my dad's in the factory. Um, but what I got was an education. Another memorable professor was uh, Professor Seltzer, who was a professor of engineering and always carried a cigar. Smoking was okay at that time. Um, Dr. Steer smoked cigarettes, Dr. Morris a pipe, Dr. Seltzer a cigar that sometimes he didn't know what to do with when he was lecturing and would just put it in his jacket pocket. Um, now, 
this is going to seem really historic to you, um, but back when I was in school, we walked 10 miles to this. No, no um, there was no such thing as a spell checker. And I was not a very good speller. And one day, uh, Professor Seltzer called uh, Dr. Lee, now Dr. Lee, and myself into his office. And he said, Mr. Lee, Mr. Monfield, you appear to be very bright and hardworking but you are never going to amount to anything unless you learn how to spell. Carry a dictionary with you all the time. And to this day, uh, I carry my dictionary with me all the time. I think it's noteworthy that he was a professor of engineering. And an engineer could have said, I'm not here to teach them how to spell, but he cared enough about us to kind of look at, at the whole person, which is something I think we all have to do. Um, he also, taught us uh, dimensional analysis. And dimensional analysis just involves um, striking out the common um, denominators until you get um, the, the correct unit of, of measure, in this case, seconds uh, per day. Now, um, more practical thing of this is I, I've run a few marathons and people say, how fast did you run? Um, so five hours. And, 26.2 miles. Um, no one really knows if, unless you're a runner, um, whether five miles an hour is five hours is, is good or not. Um, but if you convert that, you cancel out the hours, um, you get minutes per mile, and you see it's 11.5 minutes per mile. If you're a runner, you have this really snide smile across your face. If you're not into um, paces, Miles per hour, we can just um, null out the minutes and we get 5.2 miles per hour, which is just a tiny bit faster than most of us can walk. Dr. Solberg, who ended up as the director of the Center for Food uh, Technology, was um, my mentor in the laboratory. I worked in his lab as a microbiologist. And I remember him telling us, I can train a monkey to pipette and plate, but I need you to think. And that carried forward with me that, that I should never treat my students as trained monkeys. And I should never take on a project that didn't require critical thinking because that um, indeed was the most important thing he, he taught. Now, again, this seems like ancient history, but 1973 is what I call the great indwell because the department was scattered through different buildings all over campus. And in 1973, the food science department building was opened up. It was at the time, the crown and the jewel of Cook College. And at the same time, the Newell apartments were opened up. Before this, undergraduates lived all over New Brunswick at the Rutgers College campus, at the Douglas College campus, but we were never together in, in one place. Um, there's something to be said about being all together in one place. I know that um, this is the age of Zoom, but being together in one place made a big difference um, to me and to my career. Um, I went on to uh, graduate school at this little trade school in, in New England, where they used the social security number as your student ID. Um, I learned in retrospect that I didn't get in because I was particularly brilliant, but because Dr. Solberg wrote a recommendation to his former classmate who became my advisor. Now they say you don't know what you've got till it's gone. And what I didn't realize that I missed was, was the warmth and, and genuine human interest from the department at Rutgers. And the other thing, without sounding self-aggrandizing, was that there were the, the best students from the best universities all over the world at, at MIT. And my foundation from Rutgers was absolutely as good as any one of them. Um, I went on to the US Department of Agriculture and one of the technical things I remembered was how to calculate thermal resistance as D values. There were these bacilli that elevate the pH of tomatoes into the range of um, that which Clostridium botulinum can grow. The question was, will canning kill these bacteria? 
I found out the D values, which you'll remember. <clears throat> you'll remember is the time and minutes it takes to transverse one log cycle of death. So that the more rapid uh, the slope, the smaller the D value. I came to Rutgers in um, 1984. Um, didn't get an ID until 2005. And um, 30 years later, there was this um, anthrax threat. You remember the Amerithrax um, attack on the United States. And people immediately said, well, what's the heat resistance of Bacillus anthracis? And no one knew. And I said, we can do that. So my graduate students and I put together a, a big study on the thermal resistance of um, the salts and traces and possible substitutes under uh, 12 different conditions. So we had 10 bacteria, 12 conditions. That's a lot of D values. We need a really good team of graduate students to do that. Another thing Dr. Solberg taught me, which is a life lesson, I think, he, he came in about three weeks after I arrived in the department. And he said, how are things going, Tom? And I said, man, this would be great if it weren't for the interruptions. And he said, Tom, the interruptions are the job. And I think that's the way for most of us. Um, another thing I learned and, and valued very much was collegiality. Um, I learned to work with, with people you know, who liked each other, who worked well together, who worked as a family, and because we were able to do this, I think we always put the student first. Um, if there was any debate or controversy about an academic matter, someone would ask, what's in the best interest of the student? And, and that would end the debate. I think it also taught me that um, sometimes I need to act against my own self-interest. When I was chair, um, sometimes I'd have this really great idea, and the faculty didn't think it was such a great idea. So I dropped it because I have a great deal of faith in the collective wisdom of the faculty. Collegiality um, breeds collaboration. And I'm happy to say that I've co-authored papers with eight members of the faculty. My major thrust was the action of antimicrobial peptides against the Steria monocytogenes. And it was only possible with the help of Dr. Carmen and Dr. Rudisher. Dr. Carmen um, worked with liposomes, these lipid bilayers that curl up in like a golf ball with a hollow center. So we could make these liposomes, which he taught my lab how to do, fill it with carboxyfluorescein, which Dr. Rudisher turned us on to um, fluorescence spectroscopy. And when carboxyfluorescein leaked out of the membrane, it fluoresced, and we were able to tell that um, Bacteriosins act as a pore formation. Now, the actual mechanisms are binding, um, insertion, pore formation. Didn't know much about binding. And Dr. Ludwig said one day, Do these have any amino acids that fluoresce? I was like, Yeah, tyrosine, tryptophan. Says, okay, we can use fluorescent spectroscopy to measure binding. And we were able to determine the binding sites on these antimicrobial peptides. We also use fluorescent spectroscopy to study membrane fluidity, because as you might imagine, um, the more rigid the membrane, the harder it was for the cells, um, the, the protein to um, insert. Tom, I just, uh, you got about one minute. Okay. Um, the last thing I learned was, was not to get boxed in. By the time I left the faculty, I probably knew 50 times more than I did when I graduated. But it's important not to get boxed in by what we know, by the skill sets we have, by the relationships we have, um, or to get boxed in by fear that we might fail, um, because failure is the um, big step towards learning. So um, with all of that, I retired in 2015. I'm having a great time with my grandchildren and riding my bicycle. And I thank you very much. And I should stop being sure. Thanks, Tom. Um, if anybody has any questions, uh, enter them in the chat or you can, uh, Peggy, not just yet. 
<laughs> Thanks, George. Thanks, Con. Uh, yeah, we just wanted to open up uh, if anybody had any questions, um, enter them in the uh, chat box or you can come off uh, mute if you'd like. Or you can save them to the end too. Hey, this is George, Tom. Hi, George. You, you, for, you forgot to mention that when you first came to Rutgers that Bruce Wasserman and I you know, talk to you and we said that you'd be working your tail off all the time. Do you remember? I remember and I thought, you arrogant SOBs, you think no one else works hard. But you were right, we <laughs> really worked hard. I miss you, Tom. I miss you, George. We'll have to have lunch soon. Are they still letting anybody in the building or do you need reason to be there? Tom, can you hear me? Was it the Venturi effect? Yeah, no, no. I want to share one memory with Tom. I'll never forget that because uh, I got my tenure in 1999 in June and July, Tom walked into my office and said, Mukund, you will be the next UPD. I said, Tom, are you sure I can do it? He said, I know you can do it. And that opened so many doors for me and... Uh, Thank you, Tom, for introducing me to the administrative side of the department. Thank you very much. You're welcome. UPVs are undergraduate program directors. Thank you, Julie. Okay, thank you. Also, can I share and one I, thing? Sure. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Montville. So you haven't changed I, a bit. <laughs> Um, one of the things that I remember just about the department in general and specifically about um, what you taught me, so Dr. Momphil was my advisor, <laughs> was um, the value of journal club and just understanding how to interpret research, being able to get up in front of our peers and present it. And I think that's been a, a skill and um, something that I've really cherished that I've carried with me throughout my career. And um, I think that was a, a great takeaway from the department and from you. And from Dr. Wasserman and Dr. Carmen and Dr. Schaffer. And later on, Dr. Matt. And Dr. Chicken. We were all, the biologists were a very tight knit group. Um, as chair, I could say more tight knit than any other group in the department. So I'll Thank just you, make Kim. a comment about the Journal Club. The memory I have that I still share with students is we want you to fail with your family that loves you before you go out into the public. <laughs> and so you were really put under pressure in that journal club so that you really were prepared to go out into the world and present your stuff. Yeah. I just want to say, Tom, I remember the day that I do remember the day that you arrived. I remember, and I'm glad that um, George brought up Dr. Wasserman Bruce, uh, because when you arrived, uh, it, it was, we were, we, ever, we were working really hard in the biology labs. And I just kind of, I just distinctly remember thinking like, well, maybe, maybe this professor will bring a little levity. <laughs> and you did, <laughs> you know, I think it, 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 it made us all relax. And I have a horrible short-term memory, but my long-term memory, and like, I can distinctly remember like lectures that almost every professor that I had in the food science department gave. I remember your lectures, George's lectures, Bruce's lectures for sure, like yesterday, right? But I remember that day that you arrived and how excited I was to be able to take one of your classes, your book, your micro class. That's great, thank you, Laura. Thank you all. Um, we'll move on. Uh, thank you so much, Tom. Uh, uh, Carl, introduce uh, Dr. Poole. Ready to go then. Okay, um, Tom, thanks so much for sharing with us. That was awesome. Um, so our next speaker, let me go ahead and introduce Peggy. So Dr. Peggy Poole is currently the Vice President of the Tea Division for Bigelow Tea Company, which is based in Fairfield, Connecticut. The position has responsibilities for R&D, 
quality tea ingredient uh, procurement. And Bigelow Tea is the market leader in the specialty tea category. Dr. Poole has over 30 years of experience in the food industry working for companies including uh, Leprino Foods, HP Hood LLC, Kraft Foods, and haagen -Dazs. She has held leadership positions in research and development, technical regulatory affairs and quality assurance. She has been responsible for both quality and R&D initiatives, including the introduction of numerous new products such as Simply Smart Milks, Peak Treasures Premium Ice Creams, Carb Countdown Dairy Beverages, Yogurt Smoothies and Juice Beverages, Oscar Mayer's Hot Sandwiches, haagen -Dazs Vanilla Milk, chocolate ice cream, the almond bars, and chocolate peanut butter pints. Is this Thanksgiving dinner? Um, so Dr. Poole received her PhD and MS degrees in food science from Rutgers University and a BS in chemistry and nutrition from Douglas College at Rutgers University. You know, Peggy has been so valuable, um, contributed to our department uh, with her knowledge and so forth. And, it's so great to have her speak here this evening. Uh, so Peggy, it's all yours. You're muted, Peggy. Peggy, you're on mute. How about now? We can hear you. Can you see me? Yes. You can see my presentation. Yes, we can. Excellent. Thank you for your tolerance. Well, first of all, thank you so much for the invitation to speak at this amazing occasion. 75 years, I can't believe it. Want to do, I want to thank the Food Science uh, Alumni Committee and Brian in particular for the invitation. And uh, what I want to share with you tonight, and I'm go, I'll go pretty quickly through it, but um, a little bit about how Rutgers Food Science shaped my career. And a special shout out to Dean Lawson for that green tea plug. As you can tell, I work for Bigelow Tea, and I also love a commercial plug anytime I can get one. So kudos for the green tea plug. Um, I uh, wanted to share with you a few things about just my life and, and how I've managed through and some aspirations in terms of what's important to me besides family, of course, um, that I've always captured life is a continuous learning process and that I do strive to make a positive difference every day in my life. And what I learned with Rutgers, Rutgers Food Science really provided to me the foundation, both knowledge as well as skills that allowed me to continue to grow throughout my entire career. And what I'm gonna do this evening is really quickly walk through a little bit about my education, a little bit about my work experience, and then I wanna share with you what I'm gonna call gems from Rutgers Food Science. And I'm actually hearing a few things that you're gonna hear some repetition on. So I think it'll, it's interesting that what we found of value uh, in our experiences at Rutgers Food Science are, are really amazing to me. Um, so a little bit about my, my academic career. So BS in chemistry and nutrition. So full confession, I was a pre-med student and, um, and I was gung-ho pre-med all the way to actually taking the MCATs. I was on my way to medical school uh, and I did an internship at Beth Israel Hospital in Newark, New Jersey. And I'll talk about internships a little bit later in the presentation, but I have to say that internship experience 
really changed my life. And I, I will stress again the importance of internships, but encourage all those who are students out there listening tonight, um, take them, do them, try them. Uh, and for those that are in the industry, please continue to find opportunities to have internships. It's a life life altering experience for students. So please, please find those, those internship opportunities and work through Rutgers to fill those positions because it is life changing. So then I got my master's in food science, my first opportunity for collaborative project. This was a, a a research project with Dr. Steer and Heim Frankel. And you see the title there. And it was a combination of sensory evaluation and plant physiology. And I'm not gonna go into the details because I'll be here all night, but first example of collaboration. And then um, while I was working for my master's, actually Dr. Libby Steer also offered me an opportunity to work as a research assistant in the sensory evaluation group and uh, also priceless experience. Um, I relinquished that, that research position when I decided I was going to stay for my PhD with Dr. George Carmen. Hi, George, I see you out there. And um, I, I studied the regulation of phosphatidylserine synthase and phosphatidyl and acetyl synthase in Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And George, aren't you proud? I can at least pronounce the title. No? Okay. So after... <laughs> After uh, working at Rutgers and getting my PhD, uh, these are the companies that I've worked for. I'm not, uh, you see everything ranging from um, smaller entrepreneurial companies to global entities. And I'm gonna just spend a few minutes talking about that journey because every journey has uh, lots of stories and quite interesting. So I mentioned my sensory research assistant experience three years, I then, um, my first job out of, out of uh, graduate school, and again, it's a small world. Uh, the first opportunity actually came, uh, high, Marcus, Marcus Carell, I believe was a visiting professor at the time from MIT. And he suggested to me, why don't you just talk to this, this person who's interviewing for candidates to work at an ice cream company? And it was that connection that actually got my first job as at haagen one, one might say one of the best jobs ever, developing ice cream products. And you see that uh, this little almond bar over there, one of the, um, that was one of the products that um, I was personally responsible along with a team of amazing people. So developing ice cream, I have to admit, is probably, my husband at the time, well, my husband, Forget, well, my husband still is my husband. I shouldn't say at the time. My husband and I, um, he worked at Nabisco in finance and I, I was um, making ice cream at haagen -Dazs. We were the most popular couple in the neighborhood because we always had lots of good things to eat. Um, anyway, after seven years at haagen Kraft Foods for another six years in first, they haagen I'm sorry, Kraft actually recruited me to leave haagen to head up their premium frozen dessert group, which they promptly, six months into the program, I was giving birth to my second child and they sold the division to Unilever. So uh, I stayed on in a technical applications role, which I stayed for six years until I was offered a position as VP of R&D Quality and Regulatory Affairs for HP Hood based in Boston. An amazing experience. Uh, one that you can see the portfolio of products that company, again, a mid-sized company, very entrepreneurial, developed all kinds of products, everything from juices, frozen desserts, cultured products. I learned an incredible amount in that experience. Um, got tempted for an, a global opportunity at Leprino Foods in Colorado, also a great place to live. Lived there for two and a half years, uh, decided that really wasn't where I was cut out to be. I've always been a tea drinker and, and hence now I am currently am at Bigelow and say hi to Gretchen who's in the audience. She is also working at Bigelow. I'm so excited to see her on the call tonight. So anyway, it's probably too much time, but those are some of the great new products that Gretchen and another individual, Nicole, and the team at, at uh, Bigelow have been developing and were just amazing products. So 
I'm going to move on because I'm probably going over it. I want to talk with you really about the meat of my presentation, which is gems from Rutgers Food Science. And I, the first one is the internship experience. And I already made the pitch, but I do want to emphasize really how important it really changed my life. Um, I realized after going to Beth Israel Hospital, that was not what I was looking for. Um, I, I was appalled at what I saw. And so my senior year, I was like, now what am I going to do? I can't, I can't go to medical school. What am I going to do? And I wandered over to the food science department and I, I met Roy Morse. And he said, come on in. And again, to the point that you've heard earlier tonight, very warm, very welcoming. I was very interested in making a difference, health and wellness, and food science was all that and then some. So what my first gem is internships to make a difference. Please take advantage of them. If you're a student, if you're a professional, please make those opportunities available. I'm gonna to touch on the, the other gems in my next few slides. So gem number two, prerequisites matter. Learning the fundamentals builds a very strong foundation. And that I really felt the food science curriculum required lots of prerequisites. I had those because I was pre-med, but nonetheless, the foundations of all these chemistry, biology, and I'm sure there's ones you see the list here, knowing those fundamentals are essential to build on for success in the future. Another gem, processing and unit operations is important. You heard someone else mention tonight, Professor Ed Seltzer. Um, he and Dr. Joe Kokini really were critical individuals in my early, early food science understanding of unit operations and unit processes. They taught me that details matter. They taught me how to, and for the first time in my life, I'd never been in a food processing plant. Um, Ed required us to go into the plants and map every single pump valve, pipe, agitator, type of heat exchanger, tank construction, type of stainless, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What, what they taught us was details matter, ask questions and challenge assumptions. That learning I have applied throughout my entire career. I use this to this day. I use it to audit suppliers. I've been involved in new plant constructions. Those, that knowledge, those ex, that experience has been priceless to me. And uh, a special shout out to Ed and Joe for that. Communication, something else I also heard tonight. So uh, uh, again, a special thanks to Dr. Carmen, Dr. Solberg and Dr. Wasserman. You heard some, uh, some mention about Journal Club from the audience, that too was really life altering for me personally. Um, many of you may know what this is. Every, I think it was once every week or was it once a month? I don't remember. Was it once, this is part of the aging. Nonetheless, two students got the opportunity to speak. What, one, at one occasion, you got to speak about your research and another you needed to present some other research. What I learned in that was many things. One, first of all, you better know your subject. Um, you better know your audience. And then learning to accept and respond to challenging questions. Priceless experience. I was so nervous having to prepare for Journal Club and then having to get up and speak at Journal Club, but it really made a difference in my life. And it is something that I continue to use every day, uh, whether it's a, a board of directors meeting, a meeting with my president, talking with um, a potential um, a company that we're looking at acquiring, whatever it is, those, that ability to communicate, ask questions, feel difficult questions and not get rattled by it was a priceless experience. And also learning in the audience to deliver respectful, challenging questions. Uh, I can't thank, Georgia, I know you're out there. Thank you so much for that experience. As painful as it was, honestly, when I was doing it, I now really very much appreciate 
the exercise and, and really it made a difference in my career and it's something I use every day. Another gem from food science, taste matters. Uh, and special thanks to Dr. Libby Steer. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I, I worked for her as a, a research assistant and was part of, she was my, my uh, advisor for my master's degree. Taught me a lot about sensory evaluation, statistics, experimental designs, all of that information, learning how, how it is important, how to do it right, and how, how things can go wrong if you don't do it right, that knowledge, that expertise is constantly used. I've used it through my entire career in new product development, um, managing process improvements, any kind of packaging changes, cost savings, alternative suppliers, label claims, you name it, sensory evaluation, utilizing statistics and experimental design is constantly in my life. It was throughout my career and it continues to be to, today. In addition, it's I'm sure for this entire audience, taste does matter, flavor does matter. You can develop the best formulation from a nutritional aspect. If it doesn't taste good, people aren't gonna buy it. So lots of knowledge gained and a special thanks to Libby for, for her insights regarding that. The last two points I wanted to share with you. Also, an element has been mentioned, collaboration, how important that is and it drives success. I think back on my time at, at Rutgers Food Science, the holiday dinners that we, we pulled together, the graduate student association meetings, Ag Field Day. I know it's called Rutgers Day now, but it was when I was there, Ag Field Day, those ice cream sales were really critical to us and it involved a team of individuals. After graduation, are you food science reconnect? That team of folks getting together to bring us all together was priceless. All of those endeavors all involved many, many people to make it happen. New York IFT student night. We can't make it, we can't be successful unless we have collaboration. And last but not least, of course, having fun and staying connected. I, uh, here's the pitch for the national IFT. Uh, I know there are local IFTs. Uh, I, I am now proud to say that I am now a, a board member of the national IFT. And I would encourage you all to stay involved with IFT. It makes a difference that networking for the students out there, absolutely stay, get involved in the local section. Certainly the, the IFT Student Association is an amazing organization with a very far reach and lots of very fun activities. Um, Ag Field Day continues, although the name has changed, but Rutgers is still there out there selling ice cream as well as I, I believe there's other foods as well. Uh, and I would encourage you all to go back for Rutgers. Well, I, I have to look into the, I'm looking, is it still happening Ag Field Day, Rutgers Day? I don't know with COVID, I'm not sure. Carl, do you? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we would never let, not do that. Excellent, okay. excellent. <laughs> So there's the pitch for Ag Field Day, for the Rutgers Day. Um, I would encourage all of you to continue to volunteer for activities within the food science department. Uh, I have continued to that those networks, those connections that you make as an undergrad and as a graduate student are lifelong connections. Uh, my colleagues, I continue to reach out for help. I, I have an issue today with regards to sourcing a particular material. And I didn't, I didn't see if Mark Myers was out there in the audience yet. I can tell you that I reached out to Mark and he is helping me identify some alternate suppliers. So those kinds of connections, the help in my career, it's, it's all of those things. All these gems from Rutgers that I learned when I was uh, a, a graduate student really have made a difference in my career. And I cannot thank the, the students that I worked with, in particular, the faculty, can't thank you enough for all that you did to help support my career. And it's still a fun ride and I'm still going strong. I love what I do at Bigelow. Um, I'm always highly caffeinated. And, um, and, and those 
polyphenols don't hurt either. I think uh, antioxidants are, uh, I, I do believe that not only does the caffeine keep my heart pumping, but I am confident that the antioxidants are doing their job. So I'm excited and happy to, to be working in a fabulous tea company called Bigelow Tea. And with that, um, if there's any questions, um, I thank you all for your time this afternoon. How am I doing on time? I didn't go over. <sighs> Thanks, I, didn't get, I didn't get the hook from Brian. <laughs> you can unshare your screen. No. Any questions for Peggy? I don't have a question, but uh, just two comments, Peggy. First of all, great presentation. Uh, second of all, I don't know if you remember when I was the head of R&D for lactate at J&J, &J, we would you know, I'd come up to a uh, hood and we'd have those innovation sessions and they were, they were, they were awesome. They were also eye-opening. You know, I, I didn't have much uh, background in dairy technology, but I'll tell you, you brought me up to speed. Your team brought me up to speed very quickly as far as uh, that goes and made that brand a, a significant success. And the other comment I wanted to make as far as one of your gems was, uh, you know, about learning about processing and unit processing Actually, that gem actually helped me get my first job because when I did my master's research, I used extrusion technology to, uh, to do my project. And when I interviewed at uh, International Flavors and Fragrances, they were just getting into extrusion technology and they saw that on my resume and they said, oh, we want you, you know extrusion. So I ended up learning how to operate an extruder like I operated my car. <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh, awesome, but uh, again, th those gems are just awesome. I hope uh, people uh, took a lot out of it. But your your major point as far as internships go, because I know my son's going through it right now. He's a junior there, and, we're, and I'm trying to network with people to get him an internship. Uh, I know a lot of companies have cut back because of COVID, but please, any alumni that are in companies right now, uh, it's 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 getting that first internship is so so important. I remember I interned at M&M Mars and it was an incredible experience and that really solidified my choice as far as being a food scientist for my career. So thank you. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, I remember that well, the lactate development and, and that team is still going strong, developing new items. So uh, yeah, but it, it was a great experience. Thank you for those kind words. Okay, anybody else? Okay, I think we're, uh, we'll go to breakout rooms. Um, so we're gonna do a breakout room session for about 15 minutes or so. And, um, you know, just have fun with it. And, you know, meet some new people. I'll just get it set up. Yeah, for about... All right, so we'll do that and then we'll come back about 13, 15 minutes or so. All righty. I think we're all pretty much back from the breakout rooms. Hope it was fun. Um, in just a short while, we're going to uh, run some testimonial videos and then maybe open up the floor uh, to other attendees to offer their testimonials as well. And um, we'll have the breakout room for the food, uh, food science community cookbook. Uh, before we do that, I would like to invite uh, Laura Roccos, uh, food science alum and uh, former chair of the Food Science Alumni Committee to just uh, say a few words about uh, why she likes to get back. Can I do that right now? Sure. Okay, right. I just wanted to say that giving back is much appreciated 
in any form that you can. If you're a recent graduate, um, the best way to give back is through participation. Um, Peggy named all the ways that you can participate, but if you're, once you're kind of out there and established, we would greatly appreciate any donation that you could afford. Um, it is greatly appreciated. You can even target your donate donation to your activity of choice, such as one of the many memorial scholarships. But these donations are so often used to purchase and repair laboratory equipment to support student activities and to support um, experiential learning activities for our students. So uh, anything that you can donate is a great way to give back. And when you registered for this event, you may have seen a link where you can donate, um, which was very convenient for me. I, I, took, I, I took advantage of that link. Um, but just remember that when you do uh, make a, a donation to Rutgers, uh, earmark your, your donation for one of the food science activities. Um, so thank you so much. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Laura. And I, I put the link uh, to donate in the chat if anybody wants to, uh, wants to click on that. Uh, there's a few funds there you can give to. Um, the discretionary fund is, is maybe the best because it's kind of the greatest need fund. Um, so whatever the department needs. Thanks, Laura. Um, Joe, do you have any uh, anything else to say, Joe? Yeah, I just want to say uh, thank you to all of the participants. Uh, you made this, this event a great success. Um, I'd like to thank Brian for really organize, for organizing this. You know, without Brian, I, this never probably would have happened. Um, Brian is the glue for the committee. I want to thank the committee members uh, for putting in the time and, and putting this event together. Um, it, I think it, it turned out incredible. And I think we should all give ourselves, uh, you know, a round of applause for that. Um, I want to thank our esteemed speakers, uh, Dean Lawson, uh, Dr. Matthews, uh, Dr. Montville, and uh, Dr. Poole. Uh, great presentations. And again, uh, you know, just, just, just a general thanks to everyone else that participated. And finally, we're hoping that in the spring, if it's possible, we would like to actually have an in-person version of this uh, for a celebration. So, you know, we don't know where things are going to be going as far as the university policy goes with, uh, you know, with, with gatherings and things like that. But we're hoping that we can do that. So again, thank you to everyone for making this a, uh, a resounding success. Thank you, Joe. All right, so I'm gonna set up. Uh, a breakout room and uh, Christine Lukasik, one of our alums, member of the uh, Food Science Alumni Committee is going to make a little presentation on um, the Food Science Community Cookbook, which is being done in honor of the 75th anniversary. So, just give me a couple seconds there. On Microsoft. All right, can everybody see the PowerPoint? Not yet. No? no? All right. All right. More from Microsoft Teams girl, so uh, <laughs> pardon me. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Right. We good? All right. I'm gonna get this to work someday, I am, all right. All right, so uh, it's very nice to see everybody, uh, people I know, people I don't know, um, but you know, one thing we have in common is that we are a family, and that's, that's one theme that I've heard through a lot of comments today and at other occasions. Um, our department has a, has a long history of sort of the nurturing environment um, that it creates and you know it's very consistent it's gone on for years and to honor that we decided to commemorate it via a community cookbook uh 75 years of thought for food many of you probably remember the um the epic holiday parties to which all of our families you know typically attended or the international lunches in which you could you know leave new jersey you could travel the world without leaving new jersey um, so in the spirit of that, we are going to be soliciting um, recipes from you, things that maybe you would brought, have brought to a food science event or something like that. 
So our plan is to produce a hardbound, probably a hardbound book uh, with recipes, food photos, and a little fun fact uh, relating to the science in each individual recipe. Uh, we will include some anecdotes and departmental history and photos and any pictures that people would like to share, particularly of department life, uh, picnics, parties, uh, lab lunches, journal club, uh, what have you. This is gonna take a number of months. Uh, we're going to be forming a committee to do this. So my ask right now of you is to consider about whether you would like to join this committee. I think with many hands, you know, it'll make light work. So um, the group of us are going to work out a, a, a communications campaign to solicit uh, submissions by, you know, the alumni group, the department mailing list, perhaps past donors, um, and a number of us are part of groups on LinkedIn. Um, there will be opportunities to participate doing, you know, recipe testing, making sure the, ins the instructions are good, doing some, you know, amateur food photography, copywriting and layout. And then we're going to have to work out a way to distribute the books according to the university policies. I don't think we can sell them, but they will perhaps be a gift for a donation to the department. So at this point, you know, it, it, this project is but a concept and uh, we need a team to work on it together. So I would invite you at the bottom of the slide, my emails are here, or if you need to get hold of me via, uh, you know, Brian, you can certainly do it that way. But, you know, the, I would say hands down, you know, the food and food science is one of my most fond memories and the community that, you know, we had in sharing that. So uh, that's what we're looking to do. And I'd be absolutely thrilled to, to have you join. So uh, that's all I have. If anyone has any questions, by all means, uh, let me know. Thanks, Christine. Very welcome. That's Christine. a great idea, Christine. I, like I said, I have the fondest memories of those events. It was always worth the bellyache of eating all of those things that you probably shouldn't be eating together. But um, we thought this would be a fun way to, to capture uh, history. So. I'm sure there'll be a good representation of gelatin desserts just because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote my dissertation in Rick's lab on gelatin. Uh, and, they, and gelatin desserts were always well represented at international lunches from the Midwest contingent, where they always turned up in desserts and, or salads instead of desserts. So well, I still don't right. understand. <laughs> That's a Midwest salad bar. <laughs> I know, I know. And as, as a New Yorker, I just haven't ever been able to accept that. So. <laughs> there and will I be have no a brand new... Gelatin dessert uh, uh, Yes, there might be a whole salad recipe, which I can this donate. Is a not, no judgment zone, though, this book. So uh, we, <laughs> we look forward to people's contributions. And I said it will take a while to, to compile, but uh, we think it'll be a great uh, memento for people to have of their experience with our food science family. Thanks, Christine. That was great. All right. I'm going to. Uh... Oh, we'll, we'll include all this information in the follow up email as well. So. Um... You know, don't feel like you have to write anything down or anything. We'll be, we'll be in touch. Uh, I would like to now run uh, just a short video with some of our alumni offering uh, their testimonials and uh, honoring the department for its anniversary. Everybody sees that? Hey, Rutgers Food Science. Hank is out here, undergraduate class of 89. And no, we don't see it. We're not seeing it yet. Oh, you're not seeing it. Yeah, that's my fault. Ha. Okay. Do you see that? We see the screen. We okay. we see your um your the like menu files. of of files. Okay. Yeah, we're looking at your desktop. Or, or yeah, your file. There we go. There we go. You see that? Something uh, might be happening. You see a gray screen now. Yeah, but it's different. It's definitely different than your your desktop. You're not seeing uh well, Hank not seeing, We're seeing gray. Huh. I can definitely relate, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> um. It worked the first right. time. I don't know why I couldn't do it when I had to. <laughs> Peggy, I think it does that on purpose. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, what, what we'll do is we'll, we'll post that and okay. uh, we'll share that in the email as well. 
Would right. anybody actually like to offer a, a live testimonial? Anybody want to chime in and just uh, share their feelings about the department and the anniversary and, and what it's meant to them in their careers and lives? Feel free to jump in. Everybody's shy to be the first one. How about we just start picking people? No. Oh, that's cruel. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told that. <laughs> right, Gretchen? <laughs> no, working with you has been one of my gems. So. Aww. And now we get to share Rutgers together, which is even better. Thank you, Gretchen. Anybody else? I'm going to reshare what I shared with the breakout room. Hopefully they don't mind. Uh, one of the profound memories I have of graduate school and food science is the set Friday seminar, the festival of junk food, um, and watching your peers uh, present technical topics to a, a mixed audience. And the best part of it was the commentary. And, uh, you know, I had said to the, the breakout team, I said, the thing that struck me about that, it was a terrifying experience going into it but then to sit with some professors in the boardroom and have them deliver the content to you in a way that was constructive and not hurtful was a really great memory. You know, being able to take feedback constructively, give feedback constructively, that was all really terrific. And, you know, us, all of us leaving being communicative scientists is important for our professional success. So that was, uh, that's something I, I, I still treasure today. And it felt like the gong show sometimes, but. <laughs> Great. All right, well. Yeah, I spoke, I, I spoke earlier, but I mentioned something in my breakout room too about, I was actually in the first class that had, uh, when the uh, new CAF building opened in the uh, fall of uh, 89. And uh, I was in Dr. Lee's lab in the third floor. And I have to tell you, it was, uh, you, you know, you walk into the brand new labs and everything was new, bright and shiny, you know, the, the new GCs, the new HPLCs. I said, wow, is this really what it's going to be like in the real world? Well, not necessarily, but, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a, great, a great place to start. And I really think that, uh, you know, all of my colleagues, I think, were, that, I, were housed in the uh, CAF building at the time. Um, they were just great resources and helped me through uh, my graduate studies. Thanks, hey, Joe. Okay. Well, I guess that's all she wrote. Um, great event. Thanks, everybody. Uh, Joe, Carl, Dean Lawson, uh, Peggy, Tom, Christine, uh, Laura. Um, I'm not forgetting anybody. Uh, the committee, uh, thanks for putting this all together. And like Joe said, you know, hopefully we're looking forward to an in-person event in the spring. Um, thank you for, uh, you know, celebrating the milestone uh, for this department with us today. And uh, like I said, we'll be in touch with a follow-up email and uh, we'll include uh, everything that we talked about here today. Thank you all so much. Uh, have a great evening and have a wonderful and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thanks, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Bye. Thanksgiving. Yeah, thank you all. Hi, everyone. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Congratulations on 75 years. Yep. Hey, Rutgers Food Science. Hank Izzo here, undergraduate class of 89 and PhD class of 1993. So you're 75 years old. I guess it makes sense since it's been almost 30 years since I started my career in the food industry. Rutgers prepared me very well for my first job in the food industry at National Starch, now in Gridion and I've leveraged my teachings in every job since then. I worked in product development for Pillsbury, Borden, and Mars. I was at Mars for over 22 years and I just retired and now I'm working as an entrepreneur and advisor to food tech startups. Myself and my wife, Kathy, had four boys, all scientists and engineers by training, and one of them is even continuing his career in food science. And now we also have a new grandson, so I guess time marches on, not just for Rutgers, but for all of its ex-students as well. 
I had a lot of great times at Rutgers and I have a lot of fond memories. Running the extruder with a young postdoc named Mukun Carway. I think you guys know who that is. Spending time in Dr. Ho's lab doing research with my lab mates and grabbing dinner in the break area before a long, long, long evening of classes. Great times at Friday seminar with snacks, camaraderie, friends, great presentations, and actually a front row seat to watch the banter back and forth between a lot of really smart professors. And finally, I'll always remember the food science holiday parties, the diversity of food from all cultures, the fun with family and friends, and of course, the talent show, or I guess the lack of talent show. It was fun anyway. It was a lot of fun. I'm most thankful to Rutgers for the foundation it gave me to continue out in the food industry and have my career, but I'll actually always remember and miss the great friends and the many fun times that we had. So big thanks to Rutgers Food Science and big congrats and a happy, happy 75th. Hello, my name is Dr. Juan Salinas. And I have a bachelor's, a master's and a PhD from Rutgers Food Science from the class of 2000. And um, I wanna wish uh, the Food Science Department a happy 75th anniversary. Um, and I wanna thank all the staff and professors that I had over the years uh, that taught me so much, especially in food chemistry. Uh, which I've utilized on my 20 plus years of career to develop a lot of uh, different products for companies like Nestle, um, Kraft, uh, Mondelez, and uh, also Cadbury. And recently I started my own company, well, five years ago, and I have my own product out there in the market. It's called Peanut, and it's a, uh, it's a peanut puff. So <clears throat> I would like to uh, give a shout out to especially my advisor, Dr. Tor ha Tom Hartman, uh, the late Dr. Rosen, um, some of the advisors of my committee, uh, Dr. Don, um, um, also uh, Chi Tan Ho, uh, but also uh, you know some of the excellent professors there like Lou Desher and so many that have shaped my career. So thank you very much uh, and happy anniversary, everybody. Let's go Rutgers. Hi, my name is Laura Rakos, Rutgers Department of Food Science, 1984, 1986, and 1993. And I'm delighted to provide this testimonial in my support of the Department of Food Science at Rutgers. I, when I came to Rutgers, I tested the waters in many departments, but I really found a home in the Department of Food Science. They provided me with the skill sets to be a, a, a successful pharmacologist, food scientist and entrepreneur. Um, they also provided me with many opportunities to hone my socialization skills by providing lots of fun activities in the department, which I always truly enjoyed throughout, throughout the years. They've also provided opportunities for networking with potential employers, such as encouraging all students to join the Institute of Food Technologists, where I actually found my first job in the pharmaceutical industry. We also have a very active alumni committee and we have an advisory board whose role it is to ensure that all students acquire the skill sets and experience to be desired by potential employers. So I just wanna make this a short testimonial. I hope you enjoyed what I have to say and I just wanna thank everyone in the Department of Food Science for making me the successful scientist that I am today.